All right, so I'm going to show how to open up and disassemble an A1502 uh, MacBook Pro early 2015. So first what you want to do is remove all the screws from the bottom. They're pentalobes uh, 1.2, so there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Once you do that, just grab from the back here and then pull on it. And then go to the other side and do the same thing. And the whole cover should come off just like that. Okay, once you do that, set that aside. And then you'll want to switch to um, a T5. So switch to a T5 bit, all right. Um, and then what you'll want to do is disconnect the battery first. So you just go under, um, there's a little lip for the connector. So you'll just go with that with your fingernails or pry tool. It's best to use your fingernails so you don't damage anything. And then just wiggle and pull both sides just like that. So as you can see, this is how the connector works. Okay. So for this one, we're replacing the logic board. So you want to keep all the screws in order because they're all different sizes and shapes. So you don't want to mix them up. Okay. So make sure when you take these out that you keep track of what you're taking out and where they came from. All right. So we'll take out the two screws here. Once you take those out, you can take this little cover off. Do the same thing with these two. that cover off. So we'll take out this cable which connects um, this board to the main board. So this board has all the SD card slots and the HDMI and the other USB port. Okay, so just take it apart, set it aside. All right, and then you got another connector here. Uh, I'm not sure why Apple made it as two separate connectors. Maybe this one is more just for power or something to pull power or something. Move these. Okay, so there's two little push-in things that you kind of need to squeeze. Um, you can do like one at a time, might be a little bit easier, and just rock it back and forth. Okay, just like that. Okay, so then you'll want to remove this little rubber piece here. So you get your screwdriver, go underneath, and then in between there's two screws. You'll want to kind of pry it up so that way the adhesive stays inside. Okay makes it so you don't lose it all right then you can if you want to loosen these you'll need to switch to I believe this is a t8 so switch to a t8 yeah that's right okay so you can remove the two screws for the antenna So you'll have to remove these to get the antennas out of the way and then everything I think everything else uses T5 so the antennas to disconnect them from the wireless card you just lift from the back of the tail just like that and it pops up just like that okay so then you can move those out of the way now that that those two screws are disconnected and then you'll want to also move the so you can take this out these two rubber the rubber pieces take that out um, and then to remove the wireless or the webcam um, connector just go underneath and then you can peel up the adhesive just like this so this is for the webcam or the eyesight camera okay and then I try and get as close to the connector as possible and then just kind of wiggle it side to side and it disconnects just like that okay all right and you got to remove the screw here. Make sure, I think this might be, okay, yeah, that is a Phillips screw. So for that, you'll need to switch to a PH0 or J0, whichever one you have. And then just undo that screw. Okay. Then we'll switch back to the T5. Um, the wireless card, if you're not changing this board, you can leave it. Um, I'm actually not changing this board, so I didn't have to take these out, but I'll, I'll show you what it looks like to remove it since I already did. Um, the wireless card to remove this. Um, basically, once you remove the screw, just get underneath and lift it up at an angle. There's um, a heat, heat 
thermal pad underneath so it kind of sticks to the board but once you get it at an angle you kind of just wiggle it out just like this okay and you can see that's how you get the wireless card off okay I'm gonna put it back since I don't actually have to remove this to take the rest of the board out so just stick it back in just like that okay put the screw back in all right so we'll take this screw out Like that again remember not to mix any of the screws up all right and we'll take the fan connectors out the fan screws out so the fan you can actually leave attached to the motherboard if you want um, but if you want to remove the fan it goes underneath the heat sink so you'd actually have to lift it all out anyways so I'm going to leave the fan for now, but to remove the fan, what you would do is you'd flip this connector here and you can use this um, block here that sticks up to kind of push on the connector to remove this connector um, and it comes out. So I'm going to leave it in there though. Um, the other board actually comes with a fan already connected to it. So, okay, so then remove the other screw here. Okay, and then the screw down here. All right, and then you can remove the speaker connector here. So to get this out, I try and again, get as close to the connector as possible. And then you kind of just pull up a little bit and it'll come up at an angle like this. You can go around and then you can pull the other end out just like that, okay? All right got all of those out then make sure I'm not forgetting anything then you got the trackpad cable here okay you don't need to peel this up but you can so if you want to peel it up just get as close as you can and then kind of slowly peel it um, and I'm just gonna leave it there but if you need to replace the cable there's a little um, latch for the other end here just like the other um, like this keyboard cable that I'm gonna have to take out Okay, so there's the keyboard, uh, keyboard connector. You flip this little latch up, just like that. And then you can actually wiggle this keyboard connector out, just like that. Okay, SSD we're gonna have to transfer over. So here's the screw for the SSD. Just remove that. Okay, once you remove that screw, I'm gonna transfer the SSD over um, while we have that. So just same thing like the other one, you can lift it up slightly at an angle and then you can just wiggle it out just like that. Okay, so I'm going to transfer the SSD now. go and remove the rest of the screws so there's another screw up here sorry if my hand is in the way and you got another screw down here okay and you got another um, another screw up here sorry I don't know if you can see that Oh, and one other thing, um, if your computer's if your computer's still working fine, before you remove the LCD cable, after you disconnect the battery, you usually want to hold the power button. Um, but if you disconnected this, holding the power button is not going to do anything. Um, so I'm going to reconnect it just to be safe, and I'm going to hold the power button. Even though this board was dead, I want to make sure that there's no power that can go through and damage the LCD. Okay. We'll put the keyboard connector back like that, and then hold the power button just to make sure everything is drained out. Okay. All right. Once you hold the power button a few seconds, should be okay. Take this back out. 
All right. And to remove the LCD connector, there's a little latch. So I use my fingernail on the edge of that and I'll flip it up. If you can't do that, you can try and get underneath this black plastic piece and lift it up. But I found that's the easiest way. Once you do that, go on the two edges just like this and then pull this connector back just like that. Okay. All right, let's see, did I get everything? So then there's the other speaker connector here. Same thing like the other one. Get your finger, uh, fingernail or your finger as close as possible to the edge and then kind of pull up one corner and then you can go along the front and then just lift it up just like that, okay? Then underneath there, there's a connector for the microphone right here. So just peel up this and then flip this little latch all right, and then you can wiggle this connector out. All right, that should come out. There we go. Let's get a little crumb under here. All right, so you got all of that. Let's see, anything else? Um, the keyboard backlight connector is right here, so you want to flip that up as well. Move it out of the way. All right, I think that should be all the screws. So I kind of use the little heat sink a little bit to lift it. Um, if you do that, just be careful you don't bend it. And then once you get it up a little, you can hold it by the edges, just like this. Okay, move that out of the way. The, the hardest part is moving all these connectors out of the way. And then when you try and put it back, you have to move them all back. Oh, that's one other thing. Um, you have to remove this charge board. Um, the charge port connector. So there's two screws holding this in place. This one there. All right, and then there's one more here, okay? So this model is actually nice the way they designed it because you can actually replace this charge port without um, removing the whole logic board. So once you do that, you can actually um, pull this charge port out of the way and then you can peel the tape off of here, all right? And then grab close to the edge like all the other ones and just kind of slowly wiggle it and it should release the connector. If you can't, once you get a little gap, you can use your fingernail or a pry tool and kind of pull on there to be safe. If not, you can just keep pulling here, okay? So we got the charge board out. All right, so now we'll grab here and then we'll lift this out. There should be all the connectors. All right, so that's how you get this, the logic board out. So this is what the logic board looks like underneath. Okay, there's not really much else on here. So all of these things, you, uh, most people can't really service these. You'd need to know how to do some micro soldering and stuff if you need to replace any components. And you'd need kind of some electrical knowledge to know how to diagnose these, if anything. Um, and then you can see there's the two ports here and then you got the USB 3 port and the headphone jack. All right, so we're replacing it. All the ports should be exactly the same. There you go. And then since the fan and everything is already included, we'll just set this one aside. We'll grab the replacement. So the most difficult I think is actually keeping all of these connectors above um, to be able to put this back down. So it looks like this one had some liquid damage. There's some liquid residue here, or you can see like some corrosion where it turned all like white and powdery. Okay, so I don't know if this board, they weren't able to repair this board, so we have to replace this one. I wonder where the liquid got through. So the liquid got through a little bit over here, and then it went back here, and then there was also some here, so that damaged the back of this board. Okay. So the customer for this one, they didn't say they had liquid damage, but it looks like it was liquid damage. All right, then to remove this board, um, underneath that one um, Phillips screw, there's another um, T8 screw. 
So you'll have to remove that if you want to remove this little board. So I'll just show you what it looks like underneath. Um, I'm going to have to peel this cable out because there's an adhesive in the way. And then you should be able to get this out. If you still can't get it out, you might have to take this speaker out all the way. So let's see if I have to or not. Yeah, I might have to. Okay. So to take the speaker out, you just go back to the T5. There's three screws holding it in place. One here. One here. And one here. Okay, once you remove all those screws, you can actually just get your finger underneath here and then you can lift this the speaker out just like that. Okay, now you should be able to easily remove this board. And as you can see underneath, there's not really much here either. Um, I see a little water residue or liquid residue from this as well. Uh, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna get a brush and then brush this stuff off. I have it open. So I'll clean off the dust. It looks like that residue stuck there. Um, if you have residue on it, the way to clean these things off, you'd have to use like a little water and rubbing alcohol to clean that off. Um, so let's see here. Maybe I'll do that because I already had it all open. Best way is with a paper towel, and then you just get a little rubbing alcohol, and then just clean it off. Let's see if it comes out. Um, so I guess that residue stuck there. It doesn't want to come out at all. I don't know what they did, what they spilled on it, but it's stuck very strongly. So we'll get all of that out. All right, so we got all of that residue out. So we're going to have to put this back and then we'll reinstall the board. That's pretty much all there is to this. Um, but yeah, uh, if you want to watch me reassemble this whole thing, you can. But basically, it's the whole process in reverse. Um, maybe I should stop the video here because it's just going to eat up a lot of my storage on my phone. Um, the main thing, again, when you put this back, um, there's some little spring spring loaded kind of parts here just make sure those go underneath and then also make sure that all these wires are on top so the keyboard one's a little bit tricky um, you'll have to use like a um, your screwdriver or a needle or something to help you pull it up sometimes and then other than that make sure also the keyboard backlight cables in but yeah that's pretty much it uh, I'm gonna put it back together uh, I'm not going to record that because it's basically the whole thing in reverse like I said earlier. So hopefully this video helped you. If it did, make sure to like and subscribe because that will help me. And thanks for watching. Bye.